This is Joseph Pipitone with Scalability Experts, and this video is going to cover virtual machine recovery techniques using Veeam Backup and Replication 6.5 and VMware vSphere 5. Veeam offers us different types of recovery methods including Instant VM Restore, Restore an entire VM, Restore VM files and hard disks, and Restoring guest files in both Windows and Linux environments. So the backup mode that we're currently using in this job is reversed incremental. And a reversed incremental is going to be beneficial to us because the first initial backup will result in a full backup being performed and the VM data is copied block by block. Each subsequent backup will result in an incremental backup, which will copy only those data blocks that have changed since the last time the job ran. So what happens during the reverse incremental backup is Veeam will inject any of the changes into the full backup file in order to rebuild it to the most recent state of the virtual machine. So what this means is that we only have to keep one full backup on our backup repository. This is especially nice because it's a great way to conserve disk space and we don't have to schedule periodic full backups. If we start getting low on disk space and the number of restore points uh, allowed by our backup policy is exceeded, then what Veeam will do is automatically delete the oldest reversed increment and backups will continue normally. Now, in this case, we are performing active full backups periodically the first of the month. We are just doing this to uh, be extra cautious. As far as restoration is concerned, we can restore a VM to a particular point in time, and Veeam can accomplish this by simply applying the required reverse incremental files to the full backup file. So an alternate method to reverse incremental is called creating a synthetic full backup. Now this is just your standard incremental backups. However, what it will do is it will create a synthetic full backup using just the files that you have in your backup repository on the backup disk itself. Active full backups can be very resource and bandwidth intensive. So if I was to just select incremental, this would synthesize this full backup from already existing backup data. What we're doing is we're just accessing the previous full backup file and a chain of increments on the backup repository, which consolidates all of the virtual machine data from those files and writes all of that data into a new full backup file. As a result, the synthetic full backup that you have contains the same data that you would have if you created a full backup or if you performed an active full backup, uh, all without performing resource-intensive connections to your VM hosts. So we don't have to connect to our VMware hosts. Uh, we don't have to tax the disks. We don't have to tax the network. We're simply doing everything from within the backup repository itself. So we're going to simulate a failure in our data center. Now, in this particular instance, I'm going to actually delete this virtual machine here completely from the cluster. Uh, I'm going to delete all the VMDKs. Everything is just going to be is just going to be wiped out. Let's say that we have an administrator who is performing some work and he accidentally deletes this virtual machine like so. Let's say that he didn't mean to do that. He got rid of the wrong one. Well, this could be a big problem because if this happens at a critical moment in our business day, uh, let's say it's month end and we're closing out the month. Well, we need to be able to get that virtual machine back up as quickly as we can. And this is when we would want to perform an instant VM restore. Thankfully, we do have some backups and these all happen to be reverse incremental backups and we have five restore points for each virtual machine. Now, depending on how mission critical your data is, your backup job may be configured to run backups throughout the day uh, to try and keep up with your business's pace uh, and constantly changing data. So restoring to any given point is entirely possible if you are scheduling your backups to happen frequently. For now, what we would like to do is just get the server up immediately so we can perform an instant VM restore and go back afterwards to troubleshoot and find out why this virtual machine was deleted. Let's go ahead and do an instant VM recovery. The available restore points are shown, and the latest backup that we have is from last night at 9.53 p.m. We're going to restore back to the original location. We do have the option to restore to a new location, 
We can customize the host that we want to restore it to, the data store where it needs to live. Uh, we could get very specific as far as where we would like to restore it, but for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to restore it back to where it used to live. Now you can see here that the name of the virtual machine is indicated and it also shows the host where it was originally located and the new VM name. Now I can actually customize what I would like this virtual machine name to be. Uh, if I'd like to perform a storage vMotion, I can also isolate the virtual machine from the production network and I can also power it on automatically. But in this case, I just, I just want to connect it to the network. When you perform an instant VM recovery, the VM will be running on the host as far as CPU and memory. However, the virtual disks will be running off of your backup medium. Keep in mind that your performance may take a hit depending on how your backup infrastructure is configured. We've performed an instant VM restore and as you can see, the virtual machine is back and let's go ahead and boot it up. You'll notice here under storage that there is a data store that was created here. This is what's called vPower NFS. This is a Veeam technology that allows us to restore the VM from our backup medium. And now we could perform a storage vMotion and we could migrate this virtual machine back into our production data store because the two data stores are completely separate. So here I'll show you that the machine has booted up. Since this machine has been instantly restored, well, what happens to the changes that occur on this virtual machine? Well, that's where vPower NFS comes in. And if you see here under storage, this vPower NFS data store is created in order to track all of those changes. So if I decide to perform a storage vMotion to migrate the virtual machine over to our production storage, because of this vPower NFS, we'll be able to make sure that we have the latest data after we've migrated. If we're not licensed for storage vMotion, we can just use Veeam's replication functionality to essentially perform the same task. So as you can see here from the running jobs, I'm going to just stop this session. And what that will do is unlock the virtual machine backup files so backups can then continue on. And it's also going to disconnect the virtual machine from vCenter. Now I'm going to go back to our backups that we have on disk and I'm going to show you how to perform a full VM restore. Now this will actually restore the entire virtual machine back over to our production data store. So here we can see the latest restore point is from last night at 9.53 p.m., which is the same one we performed the instant restore from before. Now if I click on this point button, I could view all the different restore points that we do currently have on disk. In this case, I want the latest restore point. Same options that we had before, original location or a new location. And so we'll let this job run. And within a few minutes, we should have our virtual machine back in production. Okay, so I'm logged into a different virtual machine for the purpose of showing how to restore guest OS files. Now what this means is if a user or administrator accidentally deletes files from a server that you're currently backing up using Veeam, we can easily restore the individual files without having to go back and restore the entire virtual machine or perform an instant restore. Just to give you an example of how this works, I'm just going to go into the administration folder on the C drive on this one particular VM and let's get rid of these files, these three files here. So we're in C, Administration, Downloads. Let's get rid of these three. Let's say that I just made a mistake and I didn't mean to delete those files. So I'll empty the recycle bin so I'm sure that they're gone. And let's go back over to Veeam. So what I'm going to do is right-click the virtual machine that we need to restore files from and select Restore Guest Files. And I know that those files existed last night when this backup took place at 9.39 p.m. So that's the restore point that I'm going to reference. And what this will actually do is mount the entire file system so I can view all of the files throughout this virtual machine. And I can find the individual files that I'm looking for and I can restore them back to their original location or I can actually copy to a different location. Here are the files that I deleted. I'm going to go ahead and restore them simply by right-clicking the files I want to restore and clicking on Restore.
here's the details of it. Here's the three files that we just deleted, and these are the three files I just restored, and I'll show you them here. They're back. So that's how we can restore individual files using the Restore Guest OS feature. Once again, thank you for watching. For more information, please visit our website at scalabilityexperts.com.